I hope you're all well. Before we jump into today's video, please do hit that subscribe button, it's free to do so. If you like the video, obviously give it a like. Hit the notification bell to be alerted of when I upload a new video. Please do follow me on Instagram and also come and join us in our Facebook group, UK Cricket Creators. You can be anywhere in the world, it doesn't matter where you are, but obviously you have to love your cricket or want to get into cricket kind of in the title. That's it, that's all I have to say on that, so let's go into today's video. So today we're going to create these Spotify code plaques that have just exploded, I mean they really have. Just a note to say that everything I do on this channel is a personal use basis, I don't sell anything and my videos are made on a personal use basis. If you are selling items, it is for you to do your homework on licensing and copyright and everything like that. Not to say that personal use is okay, but most companies are okay with personal use and they're okay with fan art. So I've created a template in Design Space and I will share this. So in the link in the description will be a link to the community project and when you open it up, this is what you will see. And it just reduces the amount of work you're having to do. So I've done the play button and everything for you, your little, um, I don't even know what that's called, but everything you would see on a Spotify play when you play the music I've done for you and I've also done your square for your image So I'm going to use our one of our wedding photos and I've just done this as a template for you So the first thing I want to do is add my name of my song and my artist as well So I need to go to my text and I'm using the font Made Tommy, which is pretty close to the Spotify ones, and I think everyone's pretty much agreed that that's the font. However, Cricut Sans is also a really good font to use, and of course it's already in Design Space. Made Tommy is an installed font, so we need to go and get that. So we've come to defont.com, which is a free to use site. There's lots and lots of like thousands upon thousands of free fonts on here. Of course, they are personal use because they don't have a license with them. I'm going to search for Made Tommy and I'm going to select this top one here. So I'm going to go to download. I always like to show in folder. Once I double click it, you can see there are lots of versions in this one. I mean, it's incredible. The one that I use is Made Tommy Regular Personal. These are all open type as well, but you can choose any of these. So to install them to your computer, you're just going to double click and then go to install. This will then install it onto your computer. So if you install a font onto your computer, you won't be able to then have that font on your Design Space app, for example, because you're installing it to your device and then Design Space is using the fonts that you've got, they're called system fonts, on your device. So just because you've got a font on your computer doesn't mean when you go into Design Space app, you'll have that same font because you may not have put it on your actual phone. The other thing to note is that you need to refresh Design Space. So if Design Space is open, which mine currently is, I will need to close it and then reopen it once I've installed my font because if it's open, it won't be able to detect that you've got a new system font. The same if you're doing this on the, your phone or your device or your, you know, your Android or your iOS you will need to close down Design Space and reopen it in order for it to actually be able to connect with that font. So I've refreshed Design Space so I can go to text. I can come up to my fonts and I'm going to search Made and Made Tommy comes straight up. So the first thing I'm going to write is my song title, one of my absolute favorites. And I'm just going to bring that in and just kind of size it up. And then I'm gonna get another text box and this time I'm going to type in my artist. Again, one of my absolute favorites. 
and I can then bring that in and I can just kind of play with them. So my song title has to be larger in font size than my artist. So I'm just gonna reduce that down slightly. So this one is 34.42 and then the artist is 32.56 and actually I like the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a square around these two and I'm just going to align and align left so they are together and then I'm going to just attach those together. So what I've currently got attached is this line here is attached, then I've got my slider, and then my heart is kind of just separated. So I'm just gonna bring these over, and I'm gonna make sure that these are how I want them. So I'm going to align and align center horizontally. Perfect, and then I'm going to attach those together. So when you come in to my template, these are as they are, and then I've left it so that you can attach them together and you can work out the sizes and how you want everything to be. So I'm gonna attach those. And then I'm gonna draw around my text and this area here, and I'm going to align, and I'm going to align left absolutely brilliant and then my heart I'm just going to move slightly to kind of where I want it once I'm happy with all of this I'm then just going to attach them all together so next I need to go and actually get my code from Spotify so we're going to go into Spotify so Spotify is free to use and there's also a paid subscription as well, but I just use the free to use one. And I've got one of my favorite albums here, which is Love Songs by Phil Collins. And of course, the song I'm choosing is A Groovy Kind of Love. And if we go across to the song, you'll see there's three little dots here. We're going to click on those and copy song link. And this will copy that link to our clipboard. We're then going to go to the website www.spotifycodes.com. So that's spotifycodes.com. You need to paste in the code that we've just copied and select get Spotify code. We'll then come up with our code here. The only thing we're going to change is the format. So we need to change the format from JPEG to SVG and then we can select download. And when we select download, this cute little artwork happens. So I'm gonna select download, and then I'm just gonna let you see what it looks like, because I think it's really cool. Oh, look at that. Again, I like to go to show in folder, and then with my code, I'm just gonna move it across to my pictures so it's easy for me to find. We can go back into design space, and we're going to go to upload, upload image, browse, I can browse my pictures and I can find my code and select open. I can change my image name, so I am going to change my image name just to a groovy kind of love. And also I'm going to tag it as well, because if I was going to do a lot of these, at least if I've got tags, I can search the tags if I forget the image name. So for tags, I'm just gonna tag it as Spotify and then save. I can then select that and insert image. So you'll see it comes in with lots and lots of layers. We don't need to do a huge amount to this. I'm just gonna select this black layer here and I'm simply going to delete it. We don't need it, we don't particularly want it. I'm then going to highlight everything and I'm going to attach them together. The reason I'm attaching is they are currently grouped. And if we go to make it, all of these are going to be jumbled up and you're not going to be able to read it and it's going to be absolutely pointless. So you do want to make sure that you attach because it will then keep its complete shape as you see it. Lots of people are doing their code placement differently. Some are doing it above the text, some are doing it under here. I quite like it under here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all of these, which of course I've already attached, and I'm going to align center horizontally and just make sure that's in the center and once I'm happy with it I can then attach it. So then I've got my square here and this is a template for my artwork so I'm going to be bringing in a photo from our wedding so again upload, upload image, browse, I can select the photo I want and then open, 
I always go to complex image just to show you if I choose simple or moderately complex, it's going to change the way my photo looks. So always have it as complex. Continue. I don't need to remove anything because it's a photograph. Continue and save as a print and cut. Always want to save this as a print and cut. And again, I'm just going to change the image name just so that if I want to find it again, I can find it quickly and then save. I can select my image and insert. So typically with the Spotify plaques, they are a square. So I've created a square here, which is in line with this. But what I personally would do is I would measure the size of my plaque, resize this area, and then come in and work out what size I want my photo to be. This is not square, as you can see. So I'm gonna bring it over to my square, make it slightly smaller. I'm going to highlight both of them. I'm going to align and center. And then I'm gonna send the photograph, arrange and center back. So I can see where my square is actually going to be on my picture. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to highlight both and slice. I'm gonna hide that square, but I can just delete it if I want to. And then the excess, I can get rid of that by deleting. And that then leaves me with my picture. So my picture is set to print and cut. You can see there, cut and print or print and cut. I'm gonna print it out on my printer and then cut it out. I'm gonna do it in printable vinyl. And then this whole area here is set to cut. And I'm gonna cut it out in a white vinyl. Finally, all I'm going to do is highlight everything and I'm just going to align and center horizontally to make sure that picture is where I want it. But of course, I'm gonna manually place it anyway. It's just for me to be able to see on the canvas. I'm happy with the sizing and everything, so I can then go to make it. You can see here we've got our print and cut and then we've got our vinyl cut. Continue. I am selecting my maker, but this can be achieved on your air machines as well. With Joy, you'll only be able to cut, you won't be able to print and cut. So if you've got Joy, you'll be able to create that Spotify image and cut it. And then for the print, I would just print it out on a printable vinyl, it's in a different program, and then I would use a trimmer to manually cut round. That's how I'd get round it if I had a Joy. So I've got some Cricut printable vinyl in my printer ready to go. I'm going to send to printer, make sure I've got the right printer selected. You can choose whether to have your bleed on or off. So the bleed acts as a buffer. Now it's recently changed. It used to be with the bleed on, when it printed out, it would have like a fuzzy outline. And as I say, this is to act as a buffer. However, it seems to have changed and it seems more solid now, so it actually looks like it's part of the picture. It's not as obvious. Either way, it's just a buffer because print and cut is as accurate as it can be, but sometimes it may just be slightly off. So if you don't want to see any white, if it is slightly off, I would suggest having the bleed on. I actually prefer mine off, but I am going to leave it on today so that you can see what it looks like on. I'm also going to switch my system dialog on and I'm then going to select print. Because I've selected my system dialog to be on, it will bring up this little screen for me. I can go to preferences and I find that my printer quite often will clog or it will jam if I put thicker materials in. So I changed my media type from plain paper to photo papers and I always choose photo paper plus glossy too. And I use this setting with printable fabric, printable sticker paper, printable vinyl, printable iron on, all my printable products, I use this setting and it works great with my Canon printer. I also change the print quality from standard to high. I select OK and then print. For my cut setting, I'm going to browse all materials. I'm going to search printable and I will then select printable vinyl. And I know it's a Cricut product because it's got the Cricut logo next to it. For my vinyl, I'm using a white permanent Cricut vinyl. So I'm going to browse all materials. I'm just going to scroll down to vinyl. 
and I'm just going to select premium vinyl again it's got my Cricut logo next to it done and then for both I need to make sure I've got my fine point blade loaded please make sure when you're changing your mat selections that you are making sure that you're changing your cut settings as well so I've used the Cricut printable vinyl for my photo and you can see I've got my photo here which I've printed out and I've also left it to dry for about five to ten minutes just because it is inkjet and you can see it's got our print and cut scan line all the way around. I am using a green standard grip mat and I'm going to make sure that my print and cut is in the same direction as it is in design space. I always come in with my Cricut brayer to secure it to my mat. Make sure I've got my premium fine point blade in there, which I have. Load my mat. Because it's a print and cut, it's going to scan these lines first and you'll see a little light pop on. And then once it's scanned, it will cut out my image for me. I'm going to use my True Control knife, which as everyone knows is one of my favourite Cricut tools and it's one of my favourite weeding tools actually, even though it's not a weeding tool. And I'm just going to come in and peel the excess vinyl away. So you can just see a little bit of that bleed all the way around. I always like to trim down my vinyl just so I'm not putting excess on my mat than I need. Also, shock horror. I've realised this morning that I've run out of uh, permanent Cricut white vinyl. I can't believe that, I'm actually shocked. Uh, so I need to order some, so instead I'm using uh, removable Cricut white vinyl. It's absolutely fine, it's going on a glass frame, it will be indoors. Mm. Removable or permanent is absolutely fine in this situation. <laughs> So I like to weed while my vinyl is still on the mat and I've just got a couple of tips and tricks for you. So the first thing is I always come in and remove the middle pieces first, especially when I'm working with smaller text. It's a lot easier to remove those middle pieces and stop everything moving around when the outer of your text has got vinyl around it. So I just find it's easier. And like I say, with a lot smaller text than this, it can be quite tricky. So I always remove the innards first and it's just a good habit to get into. Then what I like to do is actually separate things just to make it a bit more manageable. So if I come in with my true control and I'm gonna cut just lightly, so all I'm cutting is the vinyl, I'm not cutting the backing. And I'm just gonna separate my text into more manageable pieces. So I personally don't have an issue with the Cricut standard grip transfer tape, I think it's fine but I know some people think it's too sticky. So if you take off a new piece and you find it is too sticky, get something like a pair of jeans or a cushion cover, place your transfer tape on it, go in for a second time and that should de-stick it slightly. I'm going to place my transfer tape on top of my vinyl with my scraper and just give that a good scrape. This is a Cricut scraper, I just spray paint them so they have different colours and they complement my craft room. Always turn it over and scrape from the back as well. 
always peel from the back as well it will give you a lot more control and I find rolling it at an angle really helps as well and if you get any bits that aren't sticking just press it back down and use your fingernail to just press it I can place my vinyl onto my glass again come in with my scraper my transfer tape and again I roll it back at an angle and I pretty much roll it so it's flat to the glass if you are having any problems just a quick tip if you get an extra large scraper and you place your transfer tape back on the scraper so you push down and you pull your transfer tape at the same time this really helps to get it off your transfer tape and onto your product and this trick works great with things like slate and canvas which can be very very difficult so I don't normally use transfer tape with a printable vinyl but I will today just to show you you want to use an older piece of transfer tape so one that's been well used just give it a little scrape you don't need to go in heavy handed a little scrape from the back peel it back Again, come in and just give that a little scrape. And then of course we can peel back. You'll see the transfer tape has taken a tiny bit off the color, which is why I normally don't use it. And like I say, if you are gonna use transfer tape, you really want to go in and make sure it's de-stuck. Or you can use a paper transfer tape, which is basically wide rolls of masking tape. Spotify, and I want to scan my code. So I'm going to go and click the search. And then you'll see the little camera icon. So click on that. I'm gonna select scan. For the first time you do it, it will ask you to allow Spotify to use your camera. You say, okay. And there we go, nice and easy. These are absolutely wonderful to make. They're easy to make, as I say, the template for this will be in the description below. You can use that to your heart's content. Go out and make some of these because they are lovely and they make beautiful, beautiful gifts. Now, about two years ago, I did a QR code video. This is out of date. It's still on this channel, but it is out of date. It's relevant again today. So this week I will be updating that tutorial and we will look at how you can create QR codes so that you can send voice messages and all sorts as a gift. As always thank you so much for joining me if you've got any comments or questions then please do leave them give the video a thumbs up subscribe and I'll see you all again soon bye